24 hours after the controversial decision to approve High Speed 2, Transport Secretary Justin Greening was in Birmingham today to promote the economic and employment benefits for the West Midlands. She also pledged compensation over and above what affected homeowners would be entitled to under the law. In a moment, we'll be talking live to a leading campaigner against HS2, but first, here's Ben Godfrey. Curzon Street Station is a relic of the railways. It was 1838 when the first train left the platform for London, but today this land's part of the Transport Secretary's rail revolution. This is going to put Birmingham at the heart of the railway network in the same way that it's at the heart of the motorway network. The HS2 terminal will be built here. Birmingham City Council says the design and construction of this station and one at Birmingham International will provide work for 22,000 people. And that will generate £1.5 billion pounds to the local Birmingham economy alone. This is a major, major announcement. Business leaders are buoyant, but campaigners could mount a legal challenge. Susan Willis was moved to tears as she told Midlands Today last night how her home in Water Orton will have to make way for the railway line. My home of 27 years is going to be demolished. For what? For train. There have been people who will have their homes demolished. One of the women was on our programme last night crying about losing her home. What, would, what message would you have to those people? First of all, I'm writing to all the people directly affected to set out exactly what the next steps are, and, and I absolutely understand how important this plan is for people like that. It's one of the reasons I've worked very hard on making sure we have some compensation and support for those people that goes over and, over and above what they're already statutory. Proper compensation, that's the call, isn't it, really? Yes, there's already some statutory laws in place uh, for these kinds of situations, but we're going to go over and above that. Let's just give you a sense of the geography here. Behind me, we've got the Bull Ring and also Moore Street Station. Coming over here, where this car park is currently, this will be where the HS2 station will be. There'll be six platforms and it will be elevated higher than Moore Street Station, linking up the other stations as well with walkways much closer to the city centre. Transport bosses say HS2 will make this city more accessible with faster connections. But just how affordable? No one at today's event was prepared to put a price on a ticket to ride. Ben Godfrey, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. Well, we're joined now from Burton Green in Warwickshire, one of the villages in the path of HS2, by Jerry Marshall, who's chairman of the group Aghast, who've campaigned against the new railway line. Good evening to you, Mr Marshall. Thanks for joining us. Now, is it now evening, time Nick. to Hi. say the game is up? It's a fait accompli. Uh, absolutely not. We, we must fight on because it's so damaging for the country. And, of course, uh, we have hope from Justin Greening because uh, the government approved Heathrow Runway 3 and then it was overturned. You know, this is going to cost £1,700 per household and it will cost four jobs for every one that it creates, says the Taxpayers Alliance. So, you know, although some areas in Birmingham will have extra jobs, the, the, the evidence from, say, Lille in France is that the, the wider region will actually lose out and will be worse off. But, but the last government and the current and, and, you know, government even the, have acknowledged the greater good. Can't you acknowledge that, the boost to injury, industry, the jobs, the benefits to the region as a, as a whole? That's why we're fighting, because... You know, it's to do with the greater good. This is a lousy scheme. We're in favour of high-speed rail, uh, but there are alternatives which are much, much better value. Even the DFT say they're better value. Yeah, but, but, but the last government and the current invested. government are both saying this is the best scheme. No, but they're... They're wrong and their own figures say that they're wrong. Their own figures say that you get six pounds return for every pound invested on the alternatives and also that the alternatives meet our capacity needs on the existing lines, on the HS2 forecast. They had to invent a new forecast to say that didn't work. What, what about Furthermore, compensation? They ignored the consult. Are, are, are you happy? Is they're talking about appalling. over and above what you're mm. legally entitled to, what the householders involved are legally entitled to. We were promised to. the best. We were promised the best possible compensation by Philip Hammond and we've been completely let down. The overwhelming response from the consultation was for something called the property bond scheme, but instead of that we've been offered the cheapest, worst possible so scheme. So just briefly then, what now? Holders having to wait. It, it will leave householders having to wait till 2027 to get compensation and until then, unless they've got a reason to move, a really 
you know, like moving job, a hardship re reason for moving, tell them they will get no compensation. So this is an appalling deal for householders. Once again, we have been completely let down by the DFT, by the government. Uh, they've reneged on their promises. Well, we'll have to leave it there. Jerry Marshall, thank you. A husband and wife.